we're getting down towards the midbrain here. And we said that the corpus callosum is a whole bunch of axons crossing from side to side. This isn't the only place that occurs. Another place that that occurs is in the anterior commissure and the posterior commissure. And we have to be a little bit careful. Now, you can see this nub in here, which is separate from the pineal gland. That's the posterior commissure. So we have some neurons passing from side to side there, right? Um, and then the anterior commissure, we have to be careful because anteriorly we've got a whole bunch of cranial nerves. Up at this level, you've got cranial nerve one, the olfactory nerve, which is going to run, and it's going to be a little bit lateral, it's going to run up above the nasal cavity and then send fibres through into the nasal cavity to detect smell, right? And then we've got the optic nerve, cranial nerve 2, which is going to run to the retina. And then we have the oculomotor nerve, cranial nerve 3, then it's going to run to the muscles of the eye and move the eye around. Um, and what we've got above the pituitary gland then is that's the, that's the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve. And this is the optic chiasma. And the optic chiasma is when the two optic nerves cross um, and because they cross above the pituitary gland and because the pituitary gland is within the bone if you get a tumor in the pituitary gland they can only push upwards and it tends to push on the optic chiasma giving weird visual defects right and now so if that's cranial nerve 2 then up here this little nub in that looks like it's part of the fornix this is actually the anterior commissure here all right tricky very, very tricky. But that's another bunch of fibres crossing from side to side. So as we descend then, we're into the territory of the midbrain here. Here's the pons, here's the medulla. Uh, and we can see some spaces. So in the midbrain, um, we've got a few things going on. So in the midbrain, this is where the pons is connecting up to the cerebral hemispheres, right? And back here is the cerebellum which is also connected to all of this stuff. The cerebellum is um, a structure that you could describe as it stores sequences of movements. It stores your handwriting, it stores your signature, it stores your dance moves, it stores your swimming stroke. It, you know, that's all, all those complicated movements that you have to learn and put together. They're stored in here and there are a lot of other movements as well. And there's some really cool stuff going on, right? In the midbrain, which I don't think we can really see here, but we'd have on one side, we'd have two little nubbin, nubbins, two little nodules back here, and there would be two on either side, and these would be the corpora quadrigemina. Isn't that a beautiful name? Corpora, bodies, quadrigemina, quad, four, gemina, twins. So the four twinned bodies. These are also known as the superior colliculi. A colliculus is just a little hillock. So the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. So the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi, they are the corpora quadrigemina. Okay, I'm talking about the same things, just got different names. And the superior colliculi, they're linked to the visual system and to movements. And you know how like, you can move your head and your body and yet your eyes still keep looking at the thing that you're looking at? Yeah, it's cool that, isn't it? How that works. Well, that's these guys up here, the superior colliculi. They're linking all these different bits together so that you can keep looking at something as you're moving around. Also, when you look at somebody's face, right? When you look at a face, you don't just look at a face and take the face in. There are a series of saccadic eye movements that occur. So you, you look at the eyes and the mouth and the eyes and the mouth and the eyes and the mouth and the nose and the eyes and the nose and the mouth and you build up a picture of the face. You don't know as you're doing this. You might do now that I've described it. But those saccadic eye movements, so we move that little centre in our eyes which has got really good vision, because right, everything around it's a bit blurry, isn't it? We move that around to build up our picture of whatever we're looking at. Faces are kind of special, but we do it with other things as well. Like when you're reading a book, your eyes flick around. All those movements linking your eyes to the vestibular system, to the cerebellum, all that stuff is, is happening here in the midbrain, superior colliculi. The inferior colliculi are similar, similar. The inferior colliculi link um, auditory stuff. Um, and again, they're linked, they, they're also linked with that 
the, linking the vestibular system to the movements of the eyes. Um, but they're also involved in the startle reflex. You know how you, if you hear a really loud bang and you kind of hunker down? That's the inferior colliculi. That, start, that reflex of you going, whoa, what was that? When you hear a really loud noise. Also, you might hear a loud noise and before you, your consciousness, really realises that you've heard that loud noise, your, your head and eyes have turned towards where the loud noise came from, right? So the loud noises, are, your brain has worked out where it came from and then it's started to turn your head and neck and shoulders towards the source because it might be a threat. Midbrain, inferior colliculi, linking up these movement centres and information. Brilliant, isn't it? So much, cool, so much cool stuff going on here, linking up all these centers, all these things that, that happen to us we don't really think about, but they're, they're beautiful. So that's the midbrain here. And passing through the midbrain, we see this, this gap, and that gap is the cerebral aqueduct. So this is the route that cerebrospinal fluid takes through the cerebral aqueduct to get to this space down here, which is the fourth ventricle. This is the pons, and then the last bit down here is the medulla. We can also see the sphenoid sinus, the frontal sinus, the ethmoid bone, uh, the straight dural venous sinus here. There's another little lump here, uh, labelled 12 here, and that's one of the mammillary bodies. There are two mammillary bodies, breast-like bodies. How they look like breasts rather than colliculi, I don't know. But anyway, the mammillary bodies are here. What do they do? Mm, I'm not sure how well that is understood. They're involved in memory. That's where, I'm, that's where I'm gonna leave it. So these spaces we see here, this is known as cisterna magna, so the big big cistern, big space, right? And this is where the CSF is collecting. So one of the purposes of cerebrospinal fluid is that the brain is floating in it. It makes the brain lighter. Um, because of course we've got all these cranial nerves coming out of the brain and going through holes in the skull which we looked at in the cranial foramina video. And you've got blood vessels coming in and out. And if, if there wasn't any CSF and the brain was just sat in the skull under its own weight, it would squash all those nerves and it would squash all those blood vessels. So this is where the CSF comes out and the brain is then floating in the, in the cerebrospinal fluid. So this is cisterna magna. It's got a more sensible modern name of cerebello medullary cistern, right? Medulla, cerebellum, so cerebello medullary cistern. We've also got up here the interpeduncular cistern because there are peduncles connecting the midbrain to the rest of the brain. In the gaps between those peduncles, those stalks, is a space filled with CSF. So those are the, that's the interpeduncular cistern. And then there's a smaller space here, which is the pontine cistern. Of course, those aren't labelled on this model, so if you were just using the labels in the books, you wouldn't be aware of these things, and I might stick a pin in them in the exam. And, hey. um, so you can see a lot. Okay. What have we looked at then? We've looked at, we've got the cerebral hemisphere here, the central sulcus, we've got the frontal lobe, parietal lobe and occipital lobe. We've got the corpus callosum and it's three parts, genu, body, splenium. We've got the, um, that see-through fence, the septum pellucidum here. And then we've got the fornix running around here from the hippocampus. We've got the anterior commissure and the posterior commissure. So these are fibers running from side to side like the corpus callosum. Uh, we've got the thalamus, we've got the third ventricle, we've got the pineal gland, the optic chiasm, sorry, the optic chiasma, the pituitary gland, the mammillary bodies, the midbrain, the corpora quadrigemina, those colliculi. We've got the cere cerebral aqueduct and the fourth ventricle, the cerebellum, the pons, the medulla and those cisterns that I just talked about. The sphenoid sinus, the frontal sinus, ethmoid bone, and that's just the brain bits. There's more going on here and there's more going on over here, right? But that's the brain. So that was the point, was to talk about these structures, vaguely what they do, where they are, uh, an idea of what their shapes are, and where you can find them in a mid-sagittal section. So hang on to that 
And when we come back to this in the future, we'll look at this in a different plane of section. We'll add, we'll add more onto this and we'll build up this three-dimensional understanding of, of the parts of the brain that the neuroscientists keep going on about. Uh, and they'll tell you more about what they'll do, but I can help you visualise where they are and how they're interconnected and that sort of thing. Okay. Oh, uh, that was uh, probably more than I expected, as usual. <laughs> uh, but these models are so detailed, and of course it is neuroanatomy. I mean, how brief can you make neuroanatomy? Right, um, I have to think of something to do next week.